11. Houston, we were wondering, uh, Neil, with your closing comment on the TV that you were going to turn it off. It indicated you might be considering uh, turning it back on. We were wondering whether we want to keep the lines up. Over. Well, we, we want your recommendation on that. I think uh, we would uh, just as soon uh, ourselves uh, terminate the TV, but uh, if you have a commitment uh, to keep, uh, we'd be more than willing to turn it back on. Roger, stand by. Apollo 11, Houston. Uh, we'd like to terminate the TV. Uh, we don't. We think we've got a really a good tape. Uh, that hour and a half show was superb. And we'd like to pick up TV uh, correction the PTC at about uh, 58 hours. Over. Roger. PTC at 58 hours. And we'll have the remaining functions in the flight plan soon. Over. Okay, fine. This is Apollo Control at 57 hours, 3 minutes. The decision, as you heard, relayed up to the crew there that we would go into the passive thermal control mode with the spacecraft in a slow roll at 58 hours in the flight plan uh, would rule out further television uh, for today. I would also like to repeat that the change of shift press conference uh, for the previous shift was canceled due to the length of that uh, television transmission. And we do expect uh, to have a change of shift briefing following this shift, uh, probably between 11.30 and 12 p.m. Central Daylight Time. At the present time, Apollo 11 is 178,236 nautical miles from Earth, and the velocity has dropped down now to 3,146 feet per second. At 57 hours, 4 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, our recommendations on the activities for the next hour or so, as far as flight plan goes, are continue your limb familiarization as desired until about 58 hours, then ingress to the CSM, close the hatch, and establish PTC shortly thereafter. Over. And Apollo 11, Houston, terminate okay. the water dump. Over. Okay. Water dump being terminated now.
11, Houston, go ahead. Howdy, Houston. I'd like to do a P-52 option 3 and tweak the platform up prior to uh, starting the PTC, over. Uh, Roger, uh, 11, stand by. Uh, 11, Houston, that sounds like a good idea to us. Go ahead. Okay, the platform's looking pretty good to me. Looks like the uh, worst axis drift is 0.01 something degrees per hour. Is that about what you figure? Uh, 11, uh, Roger, we've had reports all the marks have been good all the, uh, the last uh, couple uh, times you've run them. Uh, just a moment, I'll get you some information on the apparent uh, drift rates. Okay, Owen, thank you. You got the maroons on? Uh, say again, 11. I say you got the maroons on now? Uh, not uh, permanently here, Mike. Uh, we just have a uh, standby here while uh, Charlie's out checking how to use that special tool on a camera. Uh, the uh, maroon team will be on tomorrow. Okay, nice to hear your voice. How's everything going? Everything's going smoothly here. We sure enjoyed the show this afternoon, Mike. Okay. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, we suggest you go ahead and do the P-52 first, and uh, we'll take a look at the angles and give you some uh, new drift rates after taking a look at Sam, over. All right, fair enough.
Apollo 11, Houston, over. Go ahead, 11 here. Uh, 11 Houston, a uh, little information to you there, CDR. We've all taken a momentary uh, brief respite from our work here to have some special, uh, have a bite of special uh, moon cheese that is, I understand, has been sent to us directly from uh, Wapakoneska. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. Your own hometown. Over. Uh, we, can't, we can't pronounce it either. I think you'll enjoy that. They make a fine brand of cheese. Uh, Roger there, and I'll polish up the grammar for the next trip. <laughs> Houston 11, uh, you're looking at the now 93, and I'll proceed when uh, you copy them. Uh, 11 Houston, uh, we've got them. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We'd like to poo and accept. We have a Delta H update for you. Over. All right, Charlie. Stand by one. Houston Apollo 11, Boeing accept. Roger.
Apollo 11, Houston, we got the load in. The computer's yours, over. Houston, right. Oh, Apollo 11, Houston, we'd like you to stir up the crowds now, over. Houston, Apollo 11, right.
This is Apollo Control at 57 hours, 44 minutes. We've had no further reports uh, from the crew to indicate whether or not uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin have returned to the command module. And I guess that would answer our question. Neil Armstrong uh, reporting that they're finished with their work in the LEM will be uh, coming out shortly. Apollo uh, 11 is now 179,490 nautical miles from Earth, uh, traveling at a speed of 3,121 feet per second. And a little less than three hours, uh, we'll pass a milestone of sorts as the spacecraft passes into the lunar sphere of influence. Uh, and what we mean by that is that at that point the uh, spacecraft will be under the dominant influence of the moon's gravity. The moon's gravitational force will have uh, the predominant effect on the trajectory of the spacecraft. And at that point our displays in mission control monitoring velocity and uh, altitude will switch from Earth reference to moon reference. And we'll then begin uh, monitoring the progress of the spacecraft as it continues to accelerate toward the moon. At 57 hours, uh, 46 minutes, this is Apollo Control.
Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We're standing by to watch your start up on the PTC at any time. Uh, you can start off at uh, the verb 49. Over. Uh, we'll go. We're just finishing up the uh, probe and uh, about to close up the hatch here. We're going to be a couple of minutes late, probably getting started in the PTC. Watch, no sweat, 11. We're standing by. Over. This is Apollo Control. That was Neil Armstrong reporting that they are now uh, reinstalling the probe and drogue, uh, which is uh, just about on the flight plan schedule. And uh, they reported that they would be uh, putting the spacecraft in a slow roll shortly to uh, maintain passive thermal control. In that mode, uh, the spacecraft rotates at a rate of about three revolutions per hour to maintain even heating. We have a precise time on that uh, sphere of influence change, the point at which the moon, for calculation purposes here in mission control, be uh, comes under the predominant influence, uh, the spacecraft comes, comes under the predominant influence of the moon's gravitational field. And we now calculate that that uh, event will occur at 61 hours, 39 minutes, 55 seconds ground elapsed time.
Houston, uh, Mike, there's no weight required. Where rates are steady, you can uh, proceed on over. I'm doing it, Charlie. Right. The tunnels are all secure. The drug probe and hatch are all back in. Right. Copy out. Apollo 11, Houston, we have some new additions to your alternate and contingency checklist. If you would break that out, over.
Okay, Houston, let us write a copy. Uh, Roger, 11, if you'll turn to page F slash 2 dash 2 2, over. Okay, I have F slash 2 dash 22. Roger, Neil. Under column L, that's column Lima, line 06. The new data is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001. Line 0, 07. The new data is 0, 02134. Over. Okay, I have been F slash 2-22, column Lima, item 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001, item 7, 0, 2, 1, 3, 4. Uh, Roger, that's correct. Thank you much, Al. Eleven Houston, for your information, those two entries are an update to your Delta H that we are have already uplinked into the CMC. Over. All right, Roger. Thank you. What was I marking on, Charlie? About an 18-kilometer line or what? Uh, we, our update uh, puts you to the Delta H to 35 kilometers, Mike, over. Okay.
Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We got some switch positions for you for the high gain, over. Okay, go ahead. Roger, Buzz. Select Bravo, Omni, high gain track to manual. Beam wide, over. Okay, Bravo, Omni, track manual, and beam wide. Roger, and your high gain angles are minus five zero on the pitch, two seven zero on the yaw. Over. Okay, going there now.
Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We have some updates and some things we'd like to talk to you about if you're in the middle of your meal. If it's convenient uh, any time for you, uh, we're ready with some updates. Over. Roger, we have a couple of changes on the, the limb. Mission rules, no go for uh, your no-go card, Neil. One slight change on the uh, app dip uh, fuel uh, and temp pressure card. And we have a change to the procedure for the secondary radiator leak check, which is to be formed at, performed at 71 hours tomorrow and also some indications that uh, we have a couple of um, landing site obliques stowed in the wrong place, over. Okay, if uh, any of those in the flight plan, the secondary radiator, uh, for example? Uh, that's affirmative, the secondary radiator leak check uh, is called out in the flight plan at 7120. Uh, that procedure is uh, listed in your uh, launch operations book. Uh, we'd on page 2-9, uh, L2-9, we'd like to change that procedure over. Okay, uh, stand by. Roger, that's fine. If you're ready to copy, stand by. Ready to copy on the leak check. Roger. It's monitor secondary accumulator quantity. Step two is secondary glycol to radiator valve. Normal for 30 seconds then bypass. If no decrease in secondary accumulator quantity, are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, if no decrease in secondary accumulator quantity, secondary glycol to radiator valve to normal. Next step, secondary coolant loop pump, AC1 or AC2. After three minutes, verify glycol discharge secondary pressure, 39 to 51 PSIG. Also verify secondary VAP out temp has changed. Next step, secondary coolant loop pump off. Secondary glycol to radiator valve bypass. That ends the procedure, over. Okay, I read back. Monitor secondary accumulator quantity. Secondary glycol radiator valve normal for 30 seconds, then the bypass. If no decrease in secondary accumulator quantity, secondary glycol to radiator valve to normal. Secondary coolant loop pump, AC1 or 2. After three minutes, verify glycol secondary discharge pressure, 39 to 51 PSIG. Verify secondary evaporator outlet temp has changed. Secondary coolant loop pump off. 
secondary glycol radiator valve to bypass. And what's the reason for the change, Charlie? Roger, Span is concerned that our present procedure shown in the checklist does not really flow a glycol through the radiator. And if they want to verify that we do not have a plugged secondary radiator over. Okay, do they have any uh, abnormal indications in that system so far? Negative. Uh, this is a procedure that uh, came up with. It's just a check, Mike. Oh, everything's looking uh, great to us. Over. Okay, fine.
This is Apollo Control at 59 hours, 9 minutes. Uh, Apollo 11 now 182,000 nautical miles from Earth. And the velocity down to 3,072 feet per second. Uh, we've had uh, very little conversation from the spacecraft in the past uh, 40 minutes or so. Uh, at this time, the uh, flight plan calls for the crew to be uh, getting ready to begin their eat period. Uh, that would be followed by a nine-hour rest period. Uh, we have one change to the flight plan to pass along. The television transmission, which had been scheduled at 100 hours, 20 minutes to 100 hours, 50 minutes uh, in the flight plan, has been deleted. Uh, this transmission was to have occurred during the formation flying prior, prior to the uh, powered descent to the lunar surface. The uh, decision to delete the TV transmission from the flight plan was made uh, due to uh, a lack of available satellite channels to relay the signal from the tracking site at Madrid to Houston for conversion. The intermittent music that we're getting is apparently coming from the spacecraft. Uh, the crew has on board portable tape recorders with uh, music on the tapes, and as they store uh, their own comments on the tape, the music is, of course, erased. Uh, and uh, apparently the music is uh, triggering the uh, Vox-operated microphones, and we're getting intermittent music down from the spacecraft. Uh, 11 Houston, we're wondering who's on horns. Second, yes. We just had a little music there. That was good. You can keep it coming down, 11. Because it's a special occasion today, uh, Houston, this is the third anniversary of Gemini 10. Roger. Happy anniversary. Thank you, sir.
Uh, this is Apollo Control. That uh, comment a moment ago about the 10th anniversary of, or about the 3rd anniversary of Gemini 10 came from uh, Mike Collins, who, uh, along with John Young, flew the Gemini 10 mission July 18 uh, through July 21, 1966. The uh, brief bit of music that we got from the spacecraft was coming to us from a distance of 182,000 uh, 190 nautical miles. Roger, stand by. Okay, uh, Buzz, the first uh, item is that 
we have indications that your uh, landing site obliques are not in the proper position. Uh, if you will check, uh, we think that the intermediate scale landing site oblique is stowed in the CSM Lunar Landmark book. We think that the large scale landing site oblique is stowed in the back of the LIM Lunar Surface Map book. Over. I think I heard you, Charlie, but I'm not sure that I understand that. Well, Roger, uh, according to our storage list, the, the landing site oblique should be in the transfer bag. In the, but in the backup set of data, the intermediate scale oblique is in the CSM Lunar Landmark book, and the large scale oblique is in the back of the LAM Lunar Surface Map book, and that's the reason we think they might be not where you think they are over. Okay, we've got three obliques, uh, and the last one is one I asked for uh, recently. Is it the blow-up or the second one? The first one is uh, one that's got dotted uh, lines on it in indicating uh, horizon view and 50-degree LPD. And all three of those uh, are in the transfer book, over. Well, Roger, fine. Uh, we were wrong in our, in our backup set. Uh, we had those uh, out of place. It looks like the onboard data is good. We just wanted to let you check on that one. We have an update on the aft dips fuel card uh, that you uh, place on the panel. It's a typo error. If uh, you'll break out that little card, uh, we got the correct that typo error over. Okay, I got it. Roger, Buzz. Under the dips column on the pressure side, you go down to the fourth item. It says pressure greater than 150 PTCA should be greater than 65%. Over. Okay, it's... Uh Greater than 120 for less than 65 and greater than 150 for greater than 65. That's affirmative, Al. And we have uh, three items on the mission rules no-go card if you're ready to uh, copy those over. Okay, I've got the mission rules, no goes. Roger, Buzz. At the first entry is under EPS. Under AC bus A, the line extends all the way to high gate. Uh, actually, uh, the line should read, at DOI, it 
would be no-go AC bus A. After that, the no-go would be both buses. So if you'll just pencil in both buses from PDI through High Gate, uh, it'll be correct for that line. Over. Okay, I've got that uh, AC bus A uh, for DOI and uh, both buses no go for uh, PDI on. That's affirmative up until high gate, and you can stop at uh, at the line at under the column five minutes to low gate. Now the next line is under the G and C things, pitch and roll GDAs. You can scratch that line completely over. Roger, got it. Okay, Buzz, last entry is down under RCS, and it's a typo error it, under the three, in the line three axis attitude control. If you proceed to the right at PDI plus five, you'll see one axis, and the line goes all the way to locate the touchdown. That's incorrect. The line should stop under five minutes to locate. Over. Okay, we're stopping at it uh, five minutes to locate. That's firm. That completes that card. Uh, the rest of the updates are uh, just really for your information. Uh, based on our 58-hour platform, a look at the platform, uh, we're in really good shape. Your uh, gyros uh, have uh, almost uh, no drift in them. Since the prior to the update, we were looking at X of a minus 2.24. Meru, Y of point, a plus point eight seven, Z of minus point one one. Uh, since the update, uh, which was based on the the fifty two hour uh, P fifty two, I believe, we gave you uh, an X uh, drift of plus point seven nine, Y of plus one point zero six, Z of plus point zero two Meru. The 52-hour and the 57-hour uh, alignments were did not really give us enough time to uh, get a real good or completely valid uh, uh, update on the drift check. So we're real satisfied with the way the gyros are looking. The pippas are looking great also. We're in real good shape with those two. Over.
Hello, Radio Check. Roger, reading you five by. How many over? Okay, loud and clear. You cut out uh, when you were talking about the platform at uh, something about 52 hours. And, uh, after that, uh, we never heard you again. Uh, Roger, I guess we were changing antennas. Stand by. Uh, at the affirmative 11. We were swapping antennas on you down here. <laughs> Basically, the word is we got a real good platform. Uh, very small uh, drift on the gyros and uh, very small uh, drift in the pip was over. Roger, thank you. And I'd like to have a few words of clarification, if you'll give them to me, on the RCS reel, what that um, change essentially means. Uh, copy a uh, few words of clarification on the RCS. Uh, oh, Roger. Uh, the the update there, Neil, you're speaking of about the one axis down to uh, five minutes to low gate. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that deep uh, drill means beyond five minutes. Uh, stand by. I'll make sure I got my story straight with control. Stand by. Okay. Eleven Houston on the RCS. Uh, what we're saying is that uh, if we lose control about one axis prior to low gate, we would recommend an abort. Uh, this would require a dis a loss of of two distinct jets, uh, which is not very probable. But that's what we're recommending. After low gate, we would uh, continue on. Uh, we would recommend that we continue on to attempt the landing over. You were cut out, over. Roger, did you say you had some updates for us in the lunar surface book, over? Negative. Uh, at this time, we do not have any updates for the lunar surface book. Uh, we wanted you to have it just in case, over. Roger, you were cut out that time. Roger, at the present time, we do not have any updates for you on the Lunar Surface book. We are thinking about some and kicking them around, but they're very minor changes, over. Eleven, Houston, did you copy that transmission? Houston, we swapped antennas on you again. Uh, I say again that we do not have any uh, lunar surface uh, update, book updates at this time. We're considering a few minor ones 
but we're still kicking Miranda Moker over. Bravo 1100.
11, we have a crew status report for you. Roger, go ahead, 11. Okay, radiation, CDR 11009, CMP 10010, LMP 09011, no medication. Roger, 11, we copy for the uh, radiations. And we're considering, uh, this PC looks sort of weird to us, so we're considering uh, stopping and starting over again. We'll be with you in a couple of minutes, over. Apollo 11, Houston, would you give us a uh, LIM CM Delta C reading over?
Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We switched the antennas on you again. Would you please give us a LIM CM Delta P reading over? Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, over. Go ahead, 11 here. Roger, we switched antennas on you there a moment ago, Neil. Uh, would you please give us a LIM CM Delta P reading, over? It's less than point one. Roger. Roger, thank you, Mike. Uh, could you give us some help? Uh, this PTC is uh, strange. It's not like uh, anything we've seen before, and we're wondering if y'all have had any uh, events or any idea that could help us out, over. No, I didn't understand that. Say again? Uh, Roger, we're looking at a uh, sort of a funny-looking PTC. Uh, we've already drifted out to... Uh, 70 degrees in pitch, and we're wondering if uh, you all have had any events or any such thing as that that could uh, uh, cause us to uh, pick up these rates to drive us off. Over. All right, negative, Charlie. We don't know of anything. Roger. If it's got something to do with that entry from a stop from a position that we want to be in, I don't know. Uh, Roger, when we started off, it looked uh, real fine to us. Now it's uh, drifting off in a funny pattern that we haven't seen previously on a flight. Uh, we're just trying to figure out, uh, I think we'll probably start it over again. We'll be with you momentarily, over. Okay.
Apollo 11, Houston, we hate to say it, but we'd like to terminate this PTC and start over again. We have no assurance that we're going to get it through the sleep period with this uh, uh, funny configuration or funny pattern. We'd like you to stop it uh, now and then uh, go back to pitch 090, y'all zero, and roll whatever you stop on over. Roger. This is Apollo Control at 59 hours, 57 minutes. Uh, a few moments ago, you heard Capcom Charlie Duke advise the crew to terminate the passive thermal control mode that uh, they are presently in and reestablish uh, the three revolution per hour roll rate about the spacecraft longitudinal axis that is used for uh, thermal control. We had noticed a... Uh, uh, unexplained deviation from the attitude that the spacecraft was set up in uh, in this roll mode ideally uh, it would roll about the uh, longitudinal axis with very little wobble and if uh, a wobble is uh, introduced for one reason or another uh, the reaction control system jets would come on uh, as soon as the motion out of the uh, prescribed plane had uh, occurred had gone beyond uh, prescribed limits in this case 30 degrees uh, to correct uh, the jet firing is on past missions uh, do tend to disturb the crew's sleep rather than have the uh, reaction control system jets come on during the night and uh, perhaps have to awaken the crew to reestablish the passive thermal control mode at that time uh, we elected to correct it now Men, you disable Bravo and Charlie. Select Quad Alpha and Delta. Over. Apollo 11, Houston, over.